Dear Diary, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> These two adventurers, which I thought were on a noble quest, apparently are only here to lie, cheat, steal, and kill everyone in their path. Today, <laughs> while I was saving people's lives and learning about the dragon cult, the misadventures of my cohort included tying a woman up and then punching the supervisor in the back of the head. I guess, in some weird way, they at least found out where the dragon cultists were taking their goods. What the he- Welcome to Cannon Fodder Diecast, episode 22. So they left Aerogalpatit. <laughs> that was tunnel. pretty normal. Although first they demanded to ride around on frogs. <laughs> then they decided not to sneak in, but rather to verbally insult and musically <laughs> abuse the occupants of the roadhouse. Exhausting Caesarea and maybe setting up the madness that then followed. Leaky went into the roadhouse, discovered soapboxes, <laughs> temporarily lost his mind. Temporarily? Although he wasn't alone in that. Corey was recruited as a medic and actually physically examined some people. Then Cesario went exploring, and this is where it gets weird. She was attacked by a dragon cultist, knocked her out, dragged her across, interrogated her. That was all fine and normal. But then everybody came back to the roadhouse, and that was when it got weird. And they realized something went down. And so she called for Leaky. Leaky decided to barricade them for some reason inside the room. Cesaria had a lapse of morality and consciousness and engaged in some uh, black ops <laughs> to make sure that the woman would never be able to explain what happened. Lied to the supervisor. Leaky donkey punched the supervisor. <laughs> And then ran away and admitted his own bewilderment because he was just too excited. <laughs> While Corey is like off unloading crates and doing her job. Then Cesaria stashed the body, which is miraculously still alive, and had to have Corey heal it. And then they snuck away in a tunnel and fought some lizard people. But decided not to kill the lizard person that was left. No, they left him okay in hail on the side of the road. <laughs> He was I think, unconscious. I think one of the injustices is we always leave before Corey can get any money. Corey does it on, every time. Corey does an honest day's work and never gets paid <laughs> and has no money. <laughs> so obviously a lot of things went down in the last episode. So we're leaving off in the swamp. You guys spent most of the night, aside from your meat salad, with the lizards <laughs> But now you're beginning in earnest to follow their trail, which leads deeper into the swamp, which is much worse in terms of the actual physical quality of the terrain. This is the worst part of the swamp you've been in yet. Um, so on the first day, you have no real encounters, but you do spend a day walking through the swamp. And the water is often knee-deep, even on quarry, which means that, unfortunately, it's a real challenge for Leaky. And it saps all of the energy from you. So I want you guys to make a constitution saving throw to see how deeply the exhaustion gets to you. I, just I have a total of six. You're taking the exhaustion point. Mm -hmm. What that means is that you're taking a uh, disadvantage on basic ability checks. I got a 12. You pass. I got a 9. Zarya is taking an exhaustion point. Leaky, however, is somehow unbothered by this. <laughs> The shortest one who had who has been wading chest deep in the water. I guess you get to just swim. You get a nice cooling off point. The water keeps cooling you off as you swim. I guess. Maybe. I don't know. But thankfully, the trail itself is relatively easy to follow, as it's marked by the by the scorched trees and talon footprints anywhere where there's firm ground, like we discussed earlier. So you don't even know he's an outlander. You don't really need to struggle in daylight to follow the trail. Um. After about seven miles and a full day of tiring, frustrating, chilly travel, you find yourself at a small camp. It isn't much of a camp. It's just a clearing that's slightly drier than the muck that you've been wading through. But there are four wicker lean-tos and a stone platform with a fire pit atop it that command your attention in the wilderness, which is mostly just wet, right? 
So this is obviously an area that's been recently habitated. Uh, you also find three dugout canoes that are drawn up near one of the lean-tos. A few dozen yards beyond the campsite and the direction that you've been traveling, dry land ends. Other than moss-covered trees, fallen logs, and thick clumps of reeds, nothing else rises above the black, still water. What do you want to do? We're going to face a Cthulhu. <laughs> or a frog hemoth. Um, I imagine, do we want, the bigger thing is, do we want to camp here before we go? Because obviously we're going to want to go towards those canoes. Uh, probably, especially because it, it is the end of the day. Day. Points. Yeah, it is the end of the day. It's a full okay. day of travel. It, it, this is the hardest terrain you guys have crossed yet on your own. So, long rest. It'll be a long rest, yeah. Do you want to investigate the camp? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Sixteen. Not bad. Okay. I got a three. Okay. Well, that's all right because Jen Cesar because Cesaria finds a uh, couple of crates or the remains of crates as well as a leather tube. Do you have a prop for the leather le the leather tube? Do I have a what? A, a prop. prop for the leather tube. I don't have a prop for this one. All right. So is it can it can it be opened? Yes. Yeah. It's like a map like a like a map tube. It's Except, map, it's in this map, case, there's a, a round-up sheaf of papers on the inside. It better not be a song. <clears throat> it's not a song. Not this time. So, um, I'm going to take the initiative, and I will open it up and read whatever's in it, as long as it's in giant or common. It's written in common. Okay. Very, very poor common, um, in a very sloppy hand, but it's a ledger of things that have come through. So, it's trinkets, gold, silver, with this weight or that weight. Um, it's... Written in, we'll call it sloppy hand. You can maybe analyze that further if you choose. But um, what do you want to do with this list? Analyze it further? <laughs> You're illiterate. Well, Mostly. I, I suppose I'll analyze it further. Okay. What do you want me to roll for? What kind of check? Um, let's do, well, do you, want to, do you want to try to analyze the handwriting or do you want to try to analyze what's on the list? Those are two separate um, tests. I want to do what's on the list. Okay, that's an investigation. Okay. I feel like that's more pertinent to us. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, mostly it's just different kinds of treasures, different shipments of weapons, stuff like that. But you do find on there very heavy hammer. So I read through the list, I kind of pause, and I be like, that's weird. Why would they list a very heavy hammer on the... Heavy hammer! <laughs> I, yeah. Cesaria has a mild heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you say heavy hammer. A very heavy hammer. Must be my thrower. We're on the right track! It could, it could be. Do you want to study the list? Yes. I want you to roll an intelligence saving throw here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Fifteen! You've learned the letter H. <laughs> you can now spell ham. <laughs> I can spell a lot. I can spell a lot of things. I know five letters now. What, H-O-A-M-T? Yep. All right, and then I guess I'll analyze it one more time, or look through it one more time for handwriting. Okay, so you're perceiving now. Um, and that one is, ooh, actually good, would be a 20. Unnatural. 20, wow, okay, not bad. Um, so you would, you would have thought that this would be written in, like, lizard hand, but they struggle with the nails in their hands. This is clearly written on something with thick fingers. So whoever this was, whatever this was, has abnormally thick fingers for a humanoid. It's the purple guy. Okay. That but I can't yeah. remember. His name. So this is obviously a ledger of what's passed in this particular camp. Um, anything else you guys want to do? Anything else you want to investigate? Let's do... Um, can we do one more investigation to see if there's anything living nearby? Would it be nature or would it be... Living nearby? Like a... a Perception a check. Sentient beings. Sure. <laughs> Something who's going to attack us. <clears throat> 17. I will go with her, son. Mine was 20, unnatural again. So you, as you guys wade around in the reeds and the taller the, the taller weeds, uh, you do find a couple of very large oxen, but their bones themselves have been dissolved by acid. So it's been eaten away at by something huge and acidic. But other than that, there's no other signs of local it's large the frog animal guy habitation. Either that or an acid dragon. Or an ooze... I don't want to face another ooze. Leaky crawls. Uh, Leaky goes back into the one of the wicker huts and starts sobbing. Do you need the my helmet? 
just spiders. I forgot about the helmet of exposure therapy. (laughs) Would it work for him? Well, it's only for spiders. Oh. All right. um, So if there's nothing else that you guys want to do, you're going to bed down here? Because it's it's, it's late evening at this point. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Do you want to do watches or do we want to... Yeah, we probably should do watches. Do you need a long rest? No. I'll take the first watch. They, and they have the exhaustion points, too, so that makes sense. Okay, so, um, as... Wait, I'll take the first... doesn't make sense for her to okay. take it. I'll take that's, the, that's what I'm saying, yeah. I'll okay. take the watch. So, Cesaria is meditating, and Corey is actually sleeping, but Leaky hears, uh, the swamp ambiance, the buzzing and the flies and the, the splashing oh. until... Rip. No, no orbits. No orbits. Oh god. Until you hear uh, kind of like soft paddling. Then you hear some hissing and some like chittering. Uh oh. And in the moonlight you see the approach of nine lizard folk in three canoes. Uh-oh. They come paddling up in the early early evening. It's not midnight yet. Do they see us. Nope. You guys did not light a fire, so there's nothing to signal that you're there except you squatting in the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> I quickly go wake up Corey and um Cesaria. Rouse Cesaria out of her meditation. Okay, uh, what do you want to do? They're they're awake. You've seen them from a ways off. Again, it's flat, right? So you can see them from a ways off. What do you want to do? Do you want to lay an ambush? I you want vote to wait for them we to beach? quietly follow them. Well, well, they're, they're coming towards to us. You. So oh, I say we right. hide in the weeds. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So stealth checks. So then when they go back, we can sure. follow them. When they go past our shield. Or we attack them. <laughs> Depending on what. Now who's being immoral? And like if they if they come in, we'll have to see how they do, what they do. Stealth checks? Yep. Can we get advantage on it? Um, Considering we we are hiding in the weeds, and you've got time. Yes, you can have okay. advantage on this because my stealth is not. Good. That actually was okay. So fourteen for my first one, and eighteen for my second. Okay, I had a thirteen. Twenty-two. Uh, okay, <laughs> so Cesaria is able to coach you guys into being more stealthy, um, and she's and you're able to hide. So they beach, they unload, they drag their canoes up to one of the other lean tos, and they tip them all over. And then they huddle around the three that are already beached, and they're trying to, they're, they're like hissing and whispering and shoving each other. Um, and obviously they're trying to figure out where those other three went. Because those other three canoes shouldn't be there. What do you want to do? Stay hidden. Okay. Yep. And watch. So one of them posts a picket, and he points to three of them, and he points at the fire pit, and he... They, they go and they stand by that, and the others tramp away into the darkness after about an hour of trying to figure out and, like, investigating the local region. But, yeah, they don't find you. So, they don't know you're there. Six of them move off in the direction of the roadhouse in the tunnel that you came out of. The other three are standing on the stone plinth, the fire pit, but they haven't lit a fire. They're kind of suspicious right now. What do you want to do? Watch. We're not going back. Yeah, we'll sit and watch. Well, they're lizards. They stand still for a very long time. An hour passes. Why are you staring at me? Well, you're the impulsive one. (laughs) (laughs) Can we, like, throw a rock? Like, how far away are they? Uh, They're, like, 30 feet away. I mean, we could, but they're going to be alerted to the fact we're there. Yeah. Not if we throw it, like, past them. They are pretty dumb. What are we going to do, steal a canoe and go? Like, I mean... We don't know where we're going. Yeah. That's the whole thing. We don't know where we're going. Yeah. I guess we're going to keep camping it out until they do something. Okay. So another hour passes. One of them shoves the other one. And he shoves him back. And the third one hisses, idiots! He speaks common. And they all freeze. And they look around. And then they look at him. And they start hissing and they're yelling at each other now. That one speaks common. We need to grapple that one. So So we're going to wait, I guess, to see if he separates himself from the group at all? Sure. Or do we just want to jump in? They're not going to... He's got to go poop sometime, and I doubt they're going to poop on the, the, the stone thing. Hold up. Roll a nature check. 
We're gonna name the one that speaks common Zimbabwe. Four. I don't know if you know this, guys, but everybody poops. <laughs> <laughs> what goes in must come out. Travis. Are you looking up to lizards poop? I'm looking up how often. They go once a week. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a long wait. <laughs> Unless they stay up all the time, though, somebody's going to have to sleep eventually. They're lizards. Do they sleep with their eyes open? Fourth mm -hmm. hour passes. We need to go capture Zimbabwe. The, the strange country? thing happens as you guys stand there <laughs> squatting in the weeds. A bunch of bullywugs come hopping into the clearance and they start attacking them. And all of a sudden a fight My erupts between wugs. six bullywugs and three of these lizard people. My bullywugs! Alright, so we're going to join in so we can make sure that one doesn't die? Yeah, I guess. Alright, I'm going to jump in and try to hold the person. I'm going to take my longbow. Um, and hey, mother of frogs. I'm going after the lizard people that are attacking my, my little frogs. Why don't you call the frogs off first? Um, I'm still going to hold person. So I'm okay, so you're casting hold person on one of the lizard people or the uh, bullet? On Zimbabwe. On the, on the lizard person who speaks. Common. Okay. Common. He rolled a seven. That's not high enough. Okay, so he's held, so he's frozen. I'm yelling at my bullywog people. My bullywogs. What are you telling them? Followers. I'm telling them not to kill the one that she's incapacitating and holding. She's okay with them killing all okay, the Okay, so ones as you now. come storming out of the weeds, commanding them to do things, they all immediately like throw themselves prostate before you on the floor. And they're like, Mother of Frogs! Erbert, Erbert, Mother of Frogs! They're not very effective combatants. One of them is killed. There are two more lizard people. They start healing and slicing amongst the bullywugs. What do you do? I charge. Yeah! Roll for initiative. I'm already holding a person, so I'm not going to bother. Yeah. If oh, wait. I, if he breaks concentration, I'll come in at the end. They rolled a 19. 17. Natural 20. 19. Okay. And I give benefit to the players, so they actually end up last. And Corey, I'm just going to duck you out of the yeah. initiative here. Okay. So, Leaky, you incredibly managed to strike first. You're storming into this bullywug slash lizard people gang war. What are you going to do? Start slashing into lizard people. Okay. Don't hurt my bullywug. I just wanted to qualify the targets to make sure that we don't kill our friends. We don't, don't kill our friends. We don't. We don't. We don't kill our friends. Not even once. Not even once. That is a 26. That's a hit. For 15 damage. That's a lot of damage. Okay, so uh, that makes it your second attack. <laughs> yes, it does. That's a 12. That is not enough to hit. Its frill goes up and it shrieks at you. I shriek back. Reasonable. Cesaria? <laughs> One of them is not engaged with Leaky. The other is. So if you attack the one that's not currently engaged with Leaky, but that is attacking your frog friends, who are technically allies, but they are non-combatants in the moment. They're all. She stunned on the them with her religion's uh, prowess. Prowess, sure. Twenty-seven should hit him. Yeah, yeah, that's that's succinct. I'm hitting the ones that are hurting my blue out. Okay. For nine damage. Not a bad blow. And I'm using my bonus action to. Disengage and flee. Hi. Back up. Okay. Yeah. Any other commands you wish to? I yell at my bullywogs, go hide. Okay. So they start hopping away as their NPC um, roll here. All right. That makes it the lizard folks' turns. One of them is going to attack you. I'm just going to roll all of his stuff all at once. He's going to try to hit you with his spiked shield because that seemed to defend him on the second attack. And then he's going to attempt to bite you over the top of it. Is an 18 high enough to hit you? Nope. But he fails on both counts. Okay, the other one, Cesaria, is going to turn and he hisses and charges at you. And he is going to thrust a javelin at you. And then he's going to try to hit you with his club. He's a dual wielder. Uh, he rolled a 14. No. All right, and that means that he missed both of his attacks. And the I... other one needs to roll for uh, my concentration. What's the threshold for the hold person? Uh, 15. He rolled a 15. All right. Yeah, Wait, so that makes it Corey's Is turn. it wisdom or intelligence? Let me double check. I think it's a wisdom. 
Is it? I believe it's wisdom. I just have to double check if it changes to dexterity after the first one. Yeah, it's a wisdom. Okay, in that case, it is a 15. Okay. So he does break the hold person. All right, so do I come in at the end? Is it my turn next? Because um, he's last. That would make yes, it, it turn. would make it Corey's turn, correct. All right, um, I'm going to grapple then. Okay. The one that speaks English? The one that or speaks, speaks English. Comic. Zimbabwe! Yeah. So um, he, I get a 22. That's enough to grapple. Okay. Their strength is 15. So you're, I guess, Corey hugging him? Corey hugging. Although he's very short, so. Well, the lizard folk are five and a half feet tall. I mean, but I think I'm like eight. <laughs> so you're kind of like putting him in a headlock then. Or putting him on my shoulder. Like a child that you're done with. You kind of just, just like throw him over your shoulder. Fireman heaving him? Yeah. And just... Are you spanking him and no. like telling him he's bad? This is a new experience for him. All right. <laughs> so anyway, that makes it Leaky's turn. <clears throat> I'm going to swing at the one that... Uh, I'm pull you off to the side again. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm swinging at four. Okay. 27. That's a hit. I can't math right now. 12 damage. That's a killing blow. Do you care to narrate? I do the same thing I did to the other one. I lop his head off and... This one blinks at you. One eye and then the other. Leaky is still confused by that. Is that your first or your second attack? That's my second attack. So, So how much damage would the head do? Uh, it's an improvised weapon. We'll give it a D6. D6? I'm going to throw the head at his buddy. Sure. You sound awful happy about that. Wait, are you throwing it at the one that's attacking me, or...? Yep. I think that would count as an engagement. It would. So you're now engaged to this other lizard person. Yeah, because you just okay. threw his buddy's his head His buddy's at head at him. Um, that would disconcern him. I don't get proficiency. No. And yeah, you don't have proficiency dexterity. with heads. So that would be a dirty 20. Okay. For Do I get any damage bonuses? It's a head. I would say no. Four damage. That brings it up to 13. Do you have anything you want to shout at it while you throw his buddy's head at him? No, I don't have any, I, I don't have any whimsical puns. Fair enough. Okay, that makes it Cesario's turn. There's one way to get ahead in life. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. thinking about that one, but it was too obvious. 26. Should hit him. That's a hit. Four. Oh, my God. Dead. Twelve. Dead. <laughs> 24. So that would have been a killing blow. We've now gone about 160% into his health pool. Do you want to narrate the killing blow? After the head bounces off of him. <laughs> the head bounced off of him. It stunned him, and I stabbed Tide in the eye and said, you're a naughty lizard, and pulled Tide out. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the life enough to repent. He falls dead. All right, so that just leaves our... No, that makes it our buddy's turn, his grapple. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's yelling, get off me, get off me. I didn't even want to be here. In Common Pigeon, he rolled a 12. No. He is stuck in your hug. Yes. Okay. No, he's over her shoulder. Well, uh, yes. Vertical hug. <laughs> so he, he's unable to thrash his way out mm-hmm. of your grip. And uh, that makes it your turn. So um, at this point, we're going to exit combat, and we're going to have a conversation with this one. Okay. Yeah. You should put him down and pin him with your foot. Yeah. Careful with the phrasing. The literal amongst us would kill him and then pin him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to... <laughs> We need to be very careful with this party because it flies off into left field at the drop of a many-hatted hat. But so. one good news thing, with the except with Cesaria at the very least, I have strength on her. Yes, that's true. You can throw her out in the weeds too. And I guess I could probably throw Kyle if I no, needed to. No, there's a law there. You can't throw the dwarf. We don't. We don't throw the dwarf. If the dwarf is forsaking his moral compass. We don't throw the dwarf. Mm. At some point. You're gonna get I'm going to find an excuse to throw you. <laughs> it is now his mission. You're going to hate me, but it's going to be glorious. 
So okay, so we're going to we're going to ask some questions to our um, our one speaking lizard friend. So um, I'm going to ask him, uh, what are you doing here? Uh, he says that they were sent to collect the treasure. What treasure? Where is it? It's in the roadhouse, which I assume you guys came from. <laughs> Quit with a snippy attitude. So where are you taking it? <laughs> what? Where are you taking it? Uh, back to Castle Not. Uh, Hang on, I, I'm struggling with the pronunciation of this. They're taking it back to a castle that's uh, another seven miles across the swamp. Castle Neritar. All right, how do you get to the castle? You gotta go over the swamp, thus the canoes. Yeah, but how, is it a straight shot? No, of course not. All right. So it's a swamp, man. So, we Woman, need you to... what are you? You're like 30 feet tall. Don't talk to her that way. Or what? I kick him gently in the arm. He's not harmed by that. He's got scales. So He's like, is that all you got, elf? I'm gonna do an intim- I'm gonna do an intimidation check. Okay. I'm trying to be good. Nah, I probably don't do that very much, actually. Um, I end up with nine. He's like, listen, they busted me down to this stupid patrol duty. I used to be captain of the watch, but all I said is the bullywugs are disgusting frog vermin and should be driven out of the castle. And now I'm here. And look what happens. Bullywugs attack us, and that is ridiculous, okay? That is ridiculous, and it's inexplicable. There were no Bullywugs, then there were Bullywugs, then there were you freaks. All we want to do is collect the treasure. Um, I didn't quit it, trying to intimidate me, you weird giant. Intimidation of 16. He's a little afraid of you now. Like, back off, elf. I step I'm going to put up with this. I have rights. I'm I a step lizard. on his hand. <laughs> I squish his hand a little. Well, he's okay with that. He's, again, plated with armor. He's so, like, Get off my hand. Don't break my nails. I I'm break all of his I'm nails. going to stand over his head. So okay. he has to look up he your kilt? He looks up your kilt and he's like, I've seen better. Get off my face. But it stinks. He, he, scent is different to reptiles. He kind of enjoys the rotted smell. Like his crocodilian ancestors, he lets things rot in their underground lairs before he eats them. So this is kind of appetizing. I don't think it's the direction your character <laughs> wants to go. Get off his face. <laughs> So I'm going to um, tell. I'm going to say you're taking us to the castle. It's like, what are you going to do for me? I am mother of bullywogs. He doesn't care. He bullywogs are disgusting frog vermin. What do you want? He's like, I would like it if you drove the bullywogs out. They're not even part of the southern tribe, the decent tribe that keeps its own place. It's disgusting far black scatter spattered goo. It's got a ridiculous name, and he wears a stupid crocodile hat. You just drive him out and give it to us. What else? Because we're not doing that. Well, that's what I want. What do you mean, what else? I don't want to be enslaved to the disgusting bullywug spawn. If you can get us to the castle, I may be able to talk to the bullywogs and see if we can come up with a treaty for you. Or if you bring us to the castle, we'll see if your case is valid. My case? What are you, a lawyer? Sometimes. <laughs> it's like, listen, I eat lawyers for breakfast, okay? Well, you're not eating anybody anymore. You're pinned to the ground. For now. I slap him in the face. Again, nervous system is a little different. Much older. So we, I grab him by his mohawk and threaten to cut off his mohawk. He starts gibbering. I cut off a chunk of his mohawk. Now that's just cruel. <laughs> not a big Moral chunk. Compass, step in. <laughs> it's not stop. like two hairs. Okay, stop there. It's not hairs. It's a frill of flesh. Oh, I thought it was hair. <laughs> <laughs> now he's bleeding. He's like, ah! My head! I don't Get off my head! I need I that for thermal regulation. So we say, you're taking... Why do I know that about reptiles? Why do I know that their fro is for thermal regulation? <laughs> I only I told you you know where they're um, So like I fro. say, so you're, I, once again, reiterate, you are taking us to the castle. He's like, but what? You gotta get the bullywugs out. This is an untenable situation. We have workers' rights, man. We will do what we can. I am mother of bullywugs. But that... That's like, that. That's like saying you voted for the wrong person after the election. Yeah, but they listen to me. Hmm. He drums his little claws in the muddy ground, which makes no sound, but it's satisfying to him. And he he can smell leaky, and he's like, "Can I eat him?" No. No. What if I secure the rights to your corpse? No. You're gonna die at some point, right? Maybe. No, no, no. Definitely, my friend. That is how mortality works. How do you know I'm not immortal? I can smell the decay. <laughs> He's like, you should get checked out by a physician. 
<laughs> That's just swamp crotch. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's willing to take you back to Castle Neritar if you are willing to try and help drive the Bullywugs out by whatever force is required. I will talk to their leaders since they listen to me. And I if they not don't go, what are you going to do? I will make treaties with them since they listen to me. Then I get to eat him. Me. No! Not eating my dwarf. If you lose any appendages... I'm not yours. yours. What? He wants your appendages if they fall off. I plan on keeping all of my appendages. But... We have to have contingency plans, my friend. Life does not go the way we want. For example, I want to be captain of the guards, and I want the bully wug scum driven out of Castle Neritar. And instead, you're squatted over my face like a disgusting mustache, and I can't get out. Life didn't go the way I wanted, obviously. So if your appendages don't stay the way you want, I want them. I want those sweet, succulent delicacies. We don't eat the dwarf. You don't eat the dwarfs. I'm a reptile. Don't force your morality on me. I've eaten dwarfs. We don't taste good. You're a monster, and that makes you tastier. (laughs) Never in my 28... In a half-ish years of life that I imagine I'd have this conversation. <laughs> I've eaten your kind, too. They taste great, right? No. Well, then I can't help the fact that you have an underdeveloped mammalian palate. Frankly, I think you're just guilty on the grounds of being a dwarf, but, like, who am I to try a, you? Do you even have a palate? Yeah, I get a palate, and he, like, licks your leg. He's like, mmm, my god salt. The god salt. Oh, god salt. Oh. Oh my god, salt. Yeah. Okay, enunciate. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have lips, Kyle. He's He is a reptile creature. They don't have lips. And they poop once a week, according to Google. <laughs> it is about right. I don't care. Just again to picture the scene, Corey and Cesario are standing off to the side... I imagine Corey's probably got one hand on her hip and sword on her shoulder. Cesario's probably got tied drawn. And Leaky's just squatting over this poor thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's just, again, there's just bits of bodies and severed heads laying all over the place. I'm going to tie his hands behind his back. So you were, okay, he's rolling over. He's like, ah, no, aggression. Don't touch me. Don't care. Tying your hands behind your back. You don't need to make a strength check because he's going to fight you. Do you want me to do it? 17. There's unfortunately enough time. He's like, stop it. I am not resisting arrest. <laughs> I told you I'd take you. All you got to do is just guarantee you're going to drive the bully wugs out or let me eat him. I'm not asking that much because he like, gets tied up. You're asking a lot. So what have the bully wugs done <laughs> that actually make them monsters? They're just disgusting. They're little frogs. They're so they're arrogant. They're racist. Speciesist. Like, but they're 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 swollen. That's not, an ex- that's not a distinction. Stop interrupting me. No. Let me get my point out. No. Well, that's not respectful, sir. I don't care. Well, then we have nothing to agree on except for the fact that dwarves are tasty. Listen, snowflake. <laughs> There's the episode title. Listen, Snowflake. <laughs> it went from Zimbabwe to Snowflake. All right. Uh, we're going to the castle. We will do what we can. We need to move on. Like, Great. I'm glad to talk to somebody reasonable around here for once. My name is Snapjaw. Snowflake. I'm Corey. Good to meet you, Corey. Who are these idiots? <laughs> I'm leaky. I've been asking That's myself... That's an appropriate name I've seen under your kilt. <laughs> I've been asking myself the same thing. <laughs> well, that's not a sound we usually hear in the common language. It does sound like it's hissing, though. Okay, so he's like, well, listen, I'll take you where we need to go. We don't need to wait for my idiots to get back, because they're probably just going to die anyway, given the trail that you left behind you. So, Corey, you can take a canoe, because you're just too big to ride in a canoe with me. <sighs> And also, Leaky will ride in a canoe with me. Sound good? Works for me. Are you going to untie me? No. No! I would let him, but he's not in my canoe. Wow. Wow. Just draw your moral barriers at convenience. Well, I mean... Because he, like, walks over to... Waddles over to a canoe. He's going to have to be with one of those ones. I can't stop them from He looks at you over his shoulders. He, like, kicks the canoe over and flips over. He's like... 
Unless he wants to ride in the canoe. If he, if he wants to ride in the canoe with me, he can get his hands untied. He can't. He can't fit. The canoe is just simply too big. Okay. I'm being the nice one here. So he's, so we're loading him into the canoe. Who's he sitting next to? Is he sitting next to... Or is he sitting next to Leaky? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that means Leaky's the powerhouse behind the canoe. Okay, so, I guess I don't have a name because I Well, sighed. I asked you your name and you sighed at me. And also, I don't understand these weird elf, human, dwarf, whatever you are, weird, skinny, giant All right, person. Alright, Snowflake. <laughs> my name is Snapjaw and I'm a person too. Alright, Snowflake, my name is Cesaria and I'm having a very hard time with my moral compass, so be nice. I did just maim someone yesterday. You just murdered my friends. I don't care about who you maimed yesterday. <laughs> my name is Cesaria and I'm an addict. Hi, <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, in the morning he's willing 1. to help guide you. 1.5 days since my last murder. <laughs> so you guys are pushing off in the dawn with uh, Snapjaw. Snowflake. Leading in front of... <sighs> And Leaky powering one canoe and Corey powering another. Beautiful. Are you, are you just paddling with your hands? Mm -hmm. I guess I could be paddle boarding. Just on my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Snowflake, my name is Cesario. I don't know if he's going to recognize that. Nobody else seems real curious about his own name. So um, your day in the canoes is physically challenging, although still rather unpleasant. Uh, the chill late fall air makes for a nice contrast to the heat of rowing, but it also is really cold every time you get water on you, which happens a lot as you paddle, except for Cesaria who rides up in the top of the boat and is like a princess because <laughs> she doesn't do any of the work. Um, I'm keeping Snowflake in check. This is why he refuses to acknowledge your name. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Slapjaw? Snapjaw. Snapjaw. The cold air also keeps away insects that would have probably eaten you alive if you'd come during the summer. But by midday, you come into a murky field of long, tall grass that obstructs your view of the swamp. Here, the trail is a little harder to follow, for the trees that stand above the water are further and fewer between. Leaky, however, is able to follow it, being an outlander. And the day proceeds mostly peacefully, except for the fact that Snapjaw continues to grumble that you wouldn't just see common sense and drive the filthy vermin frog v bullywugs out. Keep talking like that. I'm going to I'm going to tie your snout shut. No, that's just cruel, sir. He's not disrespecting you or your other your other succulent dwarf brethren. He's talking about filthy bullywugs. Is that bullywugs. cruel, Corey? What? Is that cruel, Corey? Yeah. They're just saying things at this point. They're just yelling at each other across the canoe. They're just being, they're being jerks to each other. I'm not stepping in on this one. Okay. Well, <clears throat> all of a sudden in the middle of one of these yelling spats, a scream splits the air and sends birds fluttering into the sky. And suddenly two giant frogs splash into the water right in front of you. Corey's canoe is upended. She goes up, she goes over upside down because she's top heavy to begin with. Uh, but Leaky's uh, surprisingly deft paddlemanship is able to keep the canoe alright. And you see riding the, the giant frogs two bullywugs and their amphibious eyes roll wildly as they scream, Flee! The weed that walks has scented us! Open! And then their giant frog mounts leap away and they vanish into the weeds. Behind them there's a sucking noise as something looms up and out of the swamp water beside the canoe upending even Leaky's deft paddling. And the last thing you hear as you go under the water is Snapjaw yelling, I told you! Flash! And you guys are now fighting in the water. So, a great, po great pile of rotting vegetation, mud, and thrashing vines is screaming at you. Roll for initiative. Great. Ah! We're going up against a giant sucky thing. I told you we were going to run into Cthulhu. A 17. A giant sucky thing? I rolled a 1. Let's see. Mine was seven. Twenty-six. Okay. Wow. So Cesaria, mm. Leaky, Corey, giant pile of rotting vegetation, and screaming vine tentacles. Okay. 
Cesaria, um, it's huge. You're able to surface in the water. It's about waist deep on you, so that means you move with half speed. And your armor class is lowered by two for the duration of the fight because there's nowhere to run how, and it's difficult to dodge. I would say how close to the... You're about ten feet away. From No, from the edge of the... Like the get out of the crap. There's no edge. This is weeds and water. It's a standing pool of nastiness. So you're waist deep. Your armor class is lowered by two, two, two. Also, our friend is now underwater because you tied him up. You tied him up and you reduced his liberty and now he's going to drown. He's an alligator. He'll be fine. Uh, 18? It's enough to hit. For 14 damage? Hold on. One second. What kind of damage? It matters. Slashing. Slashing damage. Okay. Um, I believe that's full hit. 18. Okay, that is a hit. How much damage? Uh, it Slash. has no noticeable effect. It is a pile of wriggling nastiness. Uh-oh. So that makes it Leaky's turn. Can I, before it's Leaky's turn, can I disengage? Uh, yes. Yeah, you can. And try and get as far back as I can? Yeah. So okay. you can move 15 feet back? It's, you said half, right? So yeah. Okay, Leaky, your turn. You're servicing 10 feet away. <coughs> Okay. And splashing your nipple deep in the water. Slashing doesn't hurt it. Or it has no noticeable effect upon it immediately. I'm angry. I'm nipple deep in water. I'm angry. Okay. That's a 26. That's a hit. For 17 damage. Okay. And it's slashing. Okay. 14. Not a hit. Bounces off of one of its thicker wooden vines. Okay, Corey, your turn. I'm actually going to take this opportunity to create a magic weapon. Okay. We'll see if that makes any difference. Well, Scratchy Axe is... A magic weapon. Is so is Scratchy Tide. Is considered magic? No. Tide is. Tide is, yeah. And she used Tide. I used Tide. Yes, you did. All right, so maybe I won't bother. All right, so um, in that case, then, I will use my greatsword. That's it? No yeah. other class powers? Um, I, I will smite him, too. Or we'll do a vow of enmity. Okay. Just want to make sure that you're using your full abilities. Yep. And let's see. I'm actually going to use... I'm gonna, I'll wait until after I see if I pass it first. I critically fail. Okay, bummer. You go down and you lose your next turn because you're struggling in the mud. Okay. Um, so that makes it the Shambling Mound's turn. The closest person to the Shambling Mound who is not currently submerged in the water is Leaky, and it is going to make a multi-attack against you. It's going to slam you twice. Okay? All right. All right. So, uh, it rolled a, an 18. That would match with the So that hits too. you. Yep. Okay, now it does... 14 damage, and, oh, that's the first attack, sorry. So there's 14 damage, the next one is 25, and that one does 16 damage. And there's a side effect because it managed to hit you with both. Okay? So the side effect is that the Shambling Mound is going to attempt to engulf you. Okay. Oh, God, we're doing this again? And the engulfed target is blinded, restrained, and unable to breathe. Because you're grappled. So it's sucking you into its vines. Pulling you in. Frankly, it's giving you the greatest hug you've ever felt. The most vegan, aggressive hug ever. <laughs> and you need to make a DC Constitution saving throw at the start of the mound's turn. So you actually lose your next turn. Oh! You're sucked in. Great. So at the end of its next turn, you make a DC... Constitution, 14 Constitution saving throw to make sure that uh, it holds on to you. Okay? So, Corey lost her turn. Leaky lost his turn. Cesaria. Corey's under the water and Leaky is now, like, butt deep inside the shambling mound. And your drowning friend is currently thrashing in the water because he can't swim away. What do you do? Is it focused on... Sucking in Leaky. Oh, it's loving every second of it. 
So fistful of die? Sure. I'm just gonna leave snapshot and die. Well, I'm assuming that a um, 27 is enough to hit him. That's enough to hit. Okay. 10, 20, 26 damage. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> and then I disengage. Ow. That's not a bad blow. Unfortunately, it's still just a giant mass of vines and rotting vegetable matter and some mushrooms. So, uh... Is that your bag? It keeps on rocking on. That makes it the Shambling Mound's turn because Leaky lost his turn because he's currently being sucked into the Shambling Mound and Cory lost her turn because she's, well, underwater. So, I need to make a constitution saving throw? Yes, you do. That is a... 26. Pass. You're free. You get your next turn back. Okay. Corey, it's going to smash at you. It's going to slam at you. It's making a multi-attack. So the first one is a dirty 20. Yep. And it rolls a an 18 damage. Alright. Ouch. Bam. And it rolls a multi-attack, so it does it again. The next one is only an 11, though. Okay, that one does not hit. Okay, so then it's unable to engulf you. Um, additionally, before we flip to the next round, uh, it's important to note that our buddy failed his last constitution, or his first constitution saving throw. He passed his first one, he failed his second. So he's actually drowning. If you leave him, he will drown. And he's the one that's going to get you to this stupid castle. So, he's yelling. He's like, ow, ow, ow. <laughs> It's a freaking lizard. You shouldn't have tied him up. Doesn't matter if he's a lizard. He's not a fish. That's racist. Okay, turn. that makes it Cesario's turn. Oh, do I need to help the snowflake? Um, I would say if you if you go and you make a basic strength check or a dexterity check to pull him up, maybe to catch him with the thrashing, pass on a 12. Okay, it's dexterity. Yeah. Because my strength sucks. Would that be a saving throw? Yes, I would think so. This is, a, this is an emergency moment, so yeah. Okay, 25. Okay, so you save him, you write him, and are you going to free him? Yeah. Okay, so you slit the ropes on his wrists and ankles, and we're going to move on. We'll find out if there's any consequences to that action in the next turn. So, Leaky, you're free of the Shambling Mound, although you're grass-stained, which actually means you smell the best you have in a while. <laughs> Proceed. A little bad. Proceed to murder? Proceed to chop? Slashy make slash slash. Wood, 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 <laughs> wood. <laughs> Driftwood. That is a twenty-five. That's a hit. For thirteen damage. Not a bad blow. Corey's turn. Nope. nope. Two attacks. Two oh, chops. Oh, that's right. You're raging. It doesn't chops. matter. Chops. I get two two attacks no matter what. If you change archetypes, I think you get a second attack sooner. I like my archetype. Another 25? I mean in the Xanthar's Guide. From Thief to Scout. Yeah, I might go Scout. Anyway. Another 25. That's a hit still. For 12 more damage. Not bad. So he's taking 82 damage. He wrinkles at you. Alright, that makes it Corey's turn. Corey has not been engulfed and she's finally back up above the water. Mm-hmm. Splish, splash, we were taking a bath. And then this vine monster came out of everywhere and ruined the night. Do I have to claim my divine smite before or after I... No, you just smite. smite. You're like, by the power of tear. Well, no, because mine, I have to expend a spell, spot, spell slot when I do divine smite. You expend it when you use the smite. So is it before... But it ha does it have to be when I roll my d20 or is it afterwards? We'll go with afterwards. Okay. I'm not sure of the rule at the moment, so... Um. So I have a... 26. Okay, that's it. Do you have any kind of, like, religious declaration here? Um, I'm gonna say, for the power of tear and justice. Um, are you rolling with advantage? Because um, you did do your vow of enmity. I did. I was just double-checking what the... Are you paying close attention to what she just did? Yes? Okay, I'm just making sure. So, Leaky's paying close attention to her way of channeling here. Yeah, so the 18, or the the other one was definitely higher. This is in service of that. 
Okay. So I'm going to, um, so right now I'm up to 13, but I'm going to use uh, my Divine Smite to Bring it. Bring the do light. my extra D8. Bring the Smite. Which one? Bring the Smite. Plus 7, brings it up to 20. 102 damage is taken. Okay. All of a sudden, God. Corey's Smite rocks it back on its weird, trunky legs. Um, but that does make it its turn, and it's going to attempt to smash Leaky. Because you guys are point blank on it. So the first one, he only rolled a 10. Uh, not a hit. Okay, so that means you're not going to get engulfed. But he does have a multi-attack. So the second one was an 18. They had a hit. And that hits you for 16 damage. Ow. All right. That makes it Cesaria's well, turn. Take eight. Half. Yeah. And also, uh, real quickly before you go, our strange reptilian friend scuttles off into the weeds. God damn it. Maybe he'll come back after we're done killing you. Could be. Your turn. I'm, are you going to pursue go or are you it? going to destroy? Go after him. You do a lot of damage, but Corey and I do quite a bit of damage on our own. I'm going to go after the... Okay, so I'm going to have you roll, roll a survival check for the purpose of tracking. Four. Bummer. You lost his track. That is a 22. Hit. For 11 damage. Next one is 24. That's a hit. For 14 more damage. Not bad. 127. Okay, Corey, it's your turn. Okay. Um, so, th uh, 23. 23 is a hit. I'm going to do another Divine Smite. Okay. 23. That's wow. a killing blow. You care to narrate it since you just channeled the power of tear. Um, so as um, I, before I do the killing blow, um, I raise my sword up yep. above my head so that the point is facing towards the sky, and then I drive it down into um, the beast. And it blows apart like a lawn bag hit by a bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> so it's dead. Yes. Okay, the whole swamp goes dead silent. No birds, no insects, no weird wriggling reptile people trying to desperately escape. It goes dead silent. And you guys realize you just survived something that could have killed you under slightly different circumstances. So, I'm going to take this moment. What was his name? Snapjaw? Snapjaw. I'm going to scream Snapjaw. Okay, let's try a persuasion check. We're going to set the DC at, like, 10. 18. Okay, that's plenty. So he is no longer fleeing, comes back to you, and he's like, is it dead? Is it dead? Is the weed that walks dead? It's dead. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Because it's killed enough of my clan. It's dead. Okay. So he's like, all right, what do you want me to do? What was it? Do you know anything about it other than it's eating your people? Uh, it was a shambling mound, and it's haunted the fen for centuries. Every time we kill it, it always comes back. But maybe this time it'll really be dead. I guess you'll find out. Hopefully we won't be around here long enough to find out. How long does it usually take to come back? Months. Okay. Okay. It has to regrow. I mean, the winter should maybe kill it since it's in little pieces. But has you it know how it is. exploded like that before? Uh, not that he knows. Okay. So, maybe you killed it for realsies. We do need to back up and do experience. Experience. Okay, I forgot to give you experience for the lizard folk ambush. So that was, um, 600 experience. The shambling mount itself is worth 1,800. So 2,400 total? Split divided three. by three. So 800 piece. 800 piece. Not bad. For a second I got really excited because I thought I was going to level up again. Not for a while. Not for a long time, buddy. Uh, I'm only 4,000 experience away. Only. If we stop punching people in the back of the heads and proceed with the story, we'd get more experience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> While you're doing that, can I do an investigation check to see if anything useful is, came out of the explosion? Sure. What do you think this is, Borderlands? <laughs> well, you know. Take what you can. It did eat people. 24! You find a handful of bark. 
Too bad you're not a druid. <laughs> bark skin. Okay, so Jen got a handful of bark. You've got your experience. Uh, and also Jen managed to convince our friend Snapjot to come back. So what are you going to do now? Well, he's got to take us to the castle. True that. Can we proceed to the castle, Snapjot? So you're just asking him basically to like lead on, pretend that like nothing happened? Yep. Okay. Fair enough. That's not Google Drive. He does lead you on to the castle. So by the evening you arrive at a half-drowned woody region that he leads you up into. But instead of having this open lake of water, of stagnant still water, instead you're led to where there are standing pools of water that are bridged by narrow gaps of mud and quicksand. And he says, this way, this way. Why, why are we going through the quicksand? Well, not he's not leading you into the quicksand, but rather around it. Oh, okay. So, but I suppose you might want to roll survival checks anyway to make sure. I critically fail. Eight. Fifteen. Leaky actually follows directions and follows him around the pool. Cesaria notices that her ankles get kind of sucked into this pool, but suddenly Cory is waist deep in the quicksand. She just wanders right into it. <laughs> It's not a good time for she me. Start sinking. Not good for the chainmail. What do we do? I throw her a my rope. 48 feet of hemp and rope. Oh, okay, 48 <laughs> feet. The issue is you let go of the other end of it? No. Oh, okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure because I thought you were saying you threw her all the rope. No. no. He, that would be a bad plan. Yes. He threw her, he threw her the end of it. Okay. Tie maybe. that around yourself, Corey. All right. I tie, my, I tie it around myself. Now we're all going to pull. No. I... I probably have the strength to pull her out myself. Okay. Yeah, definitely don't let your teammates help you out. No! <laughs> Corey! That's an 11. How heavy are you, Corey? Probably tipping the scale. 11's not enough. That's my probably. point. Let me help you. Okay. So that would give him advantage. Oh. So you're basically like, I don't, I don't know what your moral support? Go, Leaky, go! That's a dirty 20. Okay, that's enough to pull her free. Corey is sandy from the waist down. All right. Matches the piety. <clears throat> you said piety. All I thought was pie and Uh Snapjaw's like, come on, come on, come on. Um, I call you on my rope as we go. <laughs> so he, he leads you into a thicket of woods. Um, the trees are thicker here than they are pretty much anywhere else. And on the other side of that, you can see the low... Stone brow of Castle Naritar. Yeah, I keep struggling with the pronunciation. Um, and he says that the Bullywugs and the Lizard Folk both live outside, but it's inside where the Dragon Nailers are. But if you want to get up close, you need to follow me a little deeper into the woods here. Okay. Dude. I'm going to do a survival check of 10. What are we checking for? To make sure he's not leading me into a trap where I'm going to die. That would be insight. Okay, so 13. Okay, so you believe him. He doesn't seem like he's lying to you. 10. Seems like he's not lying to you. Okay, so you're, we're following him into the woods? Yeah. Corey's just an unwitting I've, victim here. Well, I, in this case, I'm trying to build up trust with him, so I'm going to go along with him. Okay, so he leads you up to where there are a clutch of other... Lizard folk gathered. Um, there are six of them. And when he sees them, he hisses something to them in Draconic. And they rise up out of the weeds. And obviously this is some sort of like picket team. Scouting team or perimeter team. And they go back and forth in Draconic a little bit. I get nervous. Okay. What do you do about that? I'm going to cautiously just put my hand on Tide. I'm going to do a perception check and see if I can read It's a lot it. of hissing as soon as, you, as soon as you touch Tide. They all seem like fixated on that. What are you doing? I'm going to do a perception check on body language. Okay. That is an 18. So they're very upset to see him. They know that he should not be back. Um, however, you've done nothing to harm him. In fact, you saved him. And so what what it's obvious to Leaky with that 18 is that he's trying to convey to the guards that you guys are not a threat, but rather that you're here to help. So I want you to make a 
Stonejaw is trying to convince them that you are here to help, that you're going to help them rise up against the Bullywug um, threat, and that you're going to try to free them and maybe even bring back... Uh, you hear a, a name bandied around Vorig Manathar over and over and over again. Vorig Manathar. And the, in some way you're linked to that. Vorig Manathar. Um, but I want you to make a persuasion check to go along with his plan. Okay. Which I guess would be like, uh-huh. Or... Yeah, so I'll move my hand I guess off depending, on, depending on what we get is how convincing we are. Yeah. Is a persuasion check? 22, and I move my hand off tide. I have an 18. 22. Not bad rolls. Okay, so all of a sudden they drop into a crouch and they start hissing and, and huddling back and forth. And Snapjaw says, they're on our side. What we're willing to do is we're willing to strike when <sighs> says to. We're going to strike and we're going to throw down the bullywugs or maybe just drive them out. Mm -hmm. He's willing to concede that maybe they don't have to kill them. But they're going to drive them out because they're not welcome here. Um, but these lizard folk are on their sides. And what they say is that they have been oppressed by the bullywugs and also by the dragon cult, the dragon kneelers that occupy the castle. But there are several ways in. You could take the frontal approach. You could try to climb the wall. Or you could... Actually, I suppose those are the two ways. So you could go to the outer ward, you could go to the Barbican, the, the gate, or you could try to climb one of the walls. Um, but they want to know what your what your plan is going to be. Have any of them proceed. tried to go in there? Well, yeah, they come in and out. They've got a bunch of different roles to play. I guess you could also infiltrate as cultists. Since we don't have any of their cultist garb. Right now. Do you really want to go back undercover? Not particularly. I'm not good at that. I lost my hammer the last time we went undercover. You went undercover as a prisoner. Not as a full-fledged cultist. I don't care. Undercover does not work well for me. I just got the scratchy axe. I don't want to lose this, too. So Snapjaw says, but all of the bullywugs and all of the lizard folk, they're not going to care who you are, black or white or yellow or red or blue or weird kind of purpley gray giant thin giant person, but the cultists are going to know that you stand out and they're going to fight because you're not supposed to get that close. We were supposed to stop you, the lizard folk here at this particular perimeter line, but you've gotten through, which means all hell is going to break loose if you break through. So you either go in fighting or you're going to go in infiltrating. You could try to sneak in. Do you know about how many are in there? Cultists? Dozens. Do you know when the next group of cultists is going to be either coming out or in? Uh, he hisses at his buddies and they, they kind of go back and forth. And he says that Resimir recently arrived. And that they come in and out every day. They go out to gather wood. They go out to gather supplies. And of course they go out to sift through whatever supplies are brought in on canoe by the lizard folk, they go to the Carnath Roadhouse. So Do they come are, out in smaller bands? They come out in threes or fours. I say we wait until the cultists come out, we kill a small group, and then we take their stuff and go in infiltrated. Leaky stretchy. That's going to be the easiest way to get your hammer back, dear. But every time we infiltrate, it turns into a big fight anyway. So yeah, it, it's more on our terms. It's more on our terms, and we can kill them in small groups. But if we sneak in over the wall, it's still on our terms. I vote infiltrate. Resimir's going to recognize you. The one thing I'm going to no, say, not. actually for me... If I, she's I'm not gonna, wearing a disguise, definitely. I'm going to go with sneaking, actually, because I am a large gray person. I am never going to be able to infiltrate as a cultist. Yeah. So you're going with sneaking in yeah. over the wall? Over the wall. That's sneaking in. Yeah, I right, doubt there are any the dwarf wall. cultists. Feeling that my uh, my character, first off, would have a hard time uh, deceiving people, as that she is something else, and also once again, a, gray, a giant gray Goliath walking through the halls is not what they envision a cultist looking like. So you're going not with infiltrate, but with stealthing in. Stealthing in. We'll go over the wall and sneaking in. Sneaking in. Yep. Ugh. I think that's going to be our best bet. Okay. Is there anything that the lizard people can do to help us sneak in? 
Um, they can try to throw off the bullywugs, but they want to know what your signal will be to basically break hell loose. You'll know. No, no, no. I want a specific signal. I don't want any of this machismo nonsense. <sighs> Says Snapjaw. He wants a specific signal. What do we know? Blink, blink. Then it's time to go. And how do we know if we kill the bullywugs or if we just chase them out? Chase. You'll know is not enough. Chase the bully wugs out. I'll yell Frog Hemoth. So the signal is Frog Hemoth. Yes. He looks at Leaky. Do you understand that? I don't Frog, Say it after me. Frog Hemoth. I don't have to know. He rolled a natural 20 in his persuasion. Say it after me. Frog Hemoth. Frog Hemoth. Okay. One more time. No. For the crowd. No. Frog Hemoth. No. You're a disrespectful, strange, squat little human. I'm not a Tall human, giant. I'm a dwarf! Stop yelling over me, you disrespectful squat human. Tall giant person, do you understand the signal is frog human? I do. Alright, are we ready to infiltrate Castle of Nianthar? Yeah. Yes. I mispronounced it again, and that is where we're going to end this episode. Bye! I am Travis. I am the dungeon master and producer of the podcast. I am Kyle Newcomb. I play Leaky, exile of the Golden Tur clan. I am Jen. I play Cesario, the rogue cleric. I am Lindsay. I play Corey Gothi Kanathi. Thank you for listening. Bye! Bye. Cannon Fodder Diecast is a D&D 5e actual play podcast. The intro and outro tracks are composed by Kevin McLeod and used within their Creative Commons licenses. For more info, visit www.cannonfodderpodcast.com or follow us on Twitter at Cannon Fodder Pod, and that's C-A-N-O-N. If you like what we're doing, please leave a review on iTunes or consider supporting us on the Cannon Fodder Podcast Patreon page. And thank you for listening. Your frog Hemeth is in another castle. But um I regret giving you guys that particular quest option I hadn't planned for it. It was improvised and now it's gonna haunt me until I let you find <laughs> your stupid frog. <laughs> <laughs> I said it was a quest. <laughs>